Hey guys, this is Paul again from Blu-ray Junkies. So this video is actually going to be a mix of a topic video and a review video because this week marks the anniversary of an extremely underrated and important film and that is Malcolm X. So because this is a mix of a topic video and a review video, this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual. So I'm first going to talk about the movie and then give my review. Malcolm X was released way back when we were 14 years old, and I still remember to this day the huge amount of controversy that shrouded the making and the release of this film. I remember there were actual threats and hate crimes outside of movie theaters. In fact, our local news warned people to be cautious going to see this movie because of the danger and the violence that was supposedly reported. And it didn't help that the studio wanted this release during award season, which was in November of 92. If you guys know your history of what happened in 1992, this was also the time of the Rodney King trial and the LA riots which was still very fresh in people's minds at the time. Rodney King was a black man who was unjustifiably beaten by a group of white cops and it was caught on tape. The jury, who also was all white, favored on the white cops. And rightly so, people were very angered and frustrated by this and the rioting ensued. Again, if you guys don't know much about this, go Google it. It's history, boys and girls. You need to know about what happened during this time period. But understandably, emotions were still running high and fresh when this movie came out. But, I did, but the controversy didn't just stop there. There was also so much controversy with the making of this movie that Spike Lee had to cut out an entire subplot involving a prominent religious leader of Islam because he actually received death threats that he was going to put this in the movie, which we'll get a little bit more into later. Also because of the huge controversy, it was reported that both Spike Lee and Denzel Washington decided to hide out in London at the time of the film was released. They said they were not sure how people would react and respond to such a heavy movie once it was released. So now with so much controversy, how in the world did this movie ever get made in the first place? Well, we'll tell you. First of all, the script was floating around Hollywood since the late 70s throughout the 80s. During that time, highly prolific uh, directors such as Norman Jewison, Oliver Stone were once attached with actors like Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy as, attached as the lead. Even Steven Spielberg and Martin Scorsese were once attached until they walked away citing that it was just too controversial for them to tackle. I mean, that tells you guys right there the type of movie this is. If Martin Scorsese walked away saying it was too controversial to tackle, so in the late 80s, Spike Lee heard about the script and heard what, that it was floating around Hollywood and he campaigned hard for the director's tear, stating that he believed only a black director should really direct this movie. Now he wasn't hating the white directors, not at all. He merely thought because of the subject matter, a black director would give a more personal touch to the movie than a white director. Which even Steven Spielberg, Norman Jewison, and Martin Scorsese all agreed on. So finally, after Spike Lee's huge success with Do the Right Thing, he was really able to make whatever movie he wanted to. And after long debates, he finally gained the director's chair. Now, Spike Lee always had just one person in mind to play Malcolm X. And after seeing him in a Broadway play that he actually played Malcolm X in, he knew that only one person could fill Malcolm X's shoes, and that was Denzel Washington. And he completely nailed his performance. He dove so deep into Malcolm X's history, who he was, where he came from. He got everything down to the point where he, he was even mimicking his man mannerisms, his expressions and how he, how he held himself uh, with speeches and talking to people. He completely embodied Malcolm X persona and became Malcolm X. I mean, just look at these comparison pictures. I mean, it's just insane of how much Denzel Washington looked and acted like Malcolm X. It was so much so that even to the point where the film's producer, Marvin Wirth, who was close friends with the real Malcolm X, actually would accidentally call Denzel Washington Malcolm from time to time. Now, initially, Warner Brothers only wanted to give a budget enough to make a two hour and 15 minute movie, which was roughly around $20 million at the time. However, Lee knew he needed a bigger budget. He wanted to take the script head on, which was based off of memoirs and a novel about Malcolm X's life and history and really do it justice. He wanted people to know who this man was and what he did for this country. 
Spike Lee envisioned a three-hour opus detailing Malcolm X's life and his tragic death. However, Spike Lee knew that one, he would never get the budget he really needed without being underneath Warner Brothers' microscope through the whole production. Because of this, he followed the advice from his director friend Francis Ford Coppola and went outside the studio and sought the help of other celebrities and other places to help produce the film. Spike Lee also forfeited his salary and sold to Denzel Washington, and this not only gave him the budget he needed, but it also gained him creative control. Now say what you will about Spike Lee. There are reports that he only wanted black people on the set, black people to work on the project. He refused donations from white celebrities. And to say if that's true or not is really up to you. There's never been any proof of this at all. Now, I personally don't buy it. One reason is because he went to Francis Ford Coppola for advice on making the film. If he didn't want any help from any white people, then why would he go to Francis Ford Coppola? Now, at the very beginning of this movie, Spike Lee decided to open the film with real footage of the Rodney King beating. The scene starts with an image of the American flag accompanied with a speech voiced by none other than Malcolm X. That that man can go and say he created peace and harmony. Everywhere he's gone. This was crucially important to the story and the feel of the film. Malcolm X's commentary about the lack of equality. Spike Lee uses Malcolm X's speech, the American flag, and Ronnie King's beating to send us a message that the fight, the Malcolm X, is really still being fought today. And it was a very powerful, very bold statement to begin the film with. And it really lets you know what type of the movie you're in for. Now going back to production problems, of course the production didn't go smoothly. Besides being bombarded by death threats, there was also some people who tried to either sabotage or stop the day of filming altogether. And the reason was was because they were afraid that Spike Lee would not do Malcolm X justice. They were also afraid that Lee would tarnish Malcolm X's name. And all of this was even before the movie even started production. It was all based off of fear that Spike Lee would end out bowing down to studio heads and make a Hollywoodized version of Malcolm X. So Spike Lee endured a huge wall every day that he had to constantly beat down to get this movie made. He also promised that he would not tarnish Malcolm X and stay true to who Malcolm X was as a person prior to his conversion to Islam and after. One huge thing that came out of this movie that has never been done since is that Spike Lee was actually granted permission to film in Mecca. Now this was a huge thing. No film before or since that wasn't a documentary has ever, ever had permission to film in Mecca except this one movie. And that was because of the promises that they would not, they would not tarnish Islam or Malcolm X. Now I want to get back to Denzel Washington's most underrated performance of his career. He truly does not get enough praise and attention for, his, for this portrayal. Before production even started, he would closely study and went over hours and hours of video footage from Malcolm X's speeches, studying every little detail, every mannerism of Malcolm X. He would meet with Malcolm X's family and close friends regularly and became friends with them to really get a sense, to really know who this man was. He learned Malcolm's upbringing, how he was a teenager, his past troubles with the law, which we'll get into in our review of the movie, to his relationships all the way up until his death. He literally became Malcolm X. He said he had to remain in character all the time or else he was afraid that if he broke character, it would completely reflect on his performance. So he lived as Malcolm X, to the point he had to undergo therapy after filming Wrapped, which really isn't unusual when actors go so deep into their characters, sometimes they need help to disassociate themselves from that character, a character who they've been living with and living as for months or even years. So, so it does happen. Now, Malcolm X has also been held as the greatest Oscar snub ever. Denzel Washington was nominated for Best Picture, but lost out to Al Pacino for Sin of a Woman. Now, nothing against Sin of a Woman or Al Pacino's performance. It was a great film, great performance, but Denzel completely nailed it. Knocked it out of the park with his performance as Malcolm X. It's been added in AFI's Top 100 Best Performances in Cinematic History. 
And when the movie was in post-production, Spike Lee had to also fight with the studio about the length of the film. The original cut was close to four hours long, and even though Warner Brothers loved the movie and knew what they had on their hands, they also requested it really be trimmed down to uh, two hours and 15 minutes, which is understandable. It was very rare for a movie to be over two hours and 20 minutes back in 92 than compared to today. Today we have movies up to three and a half hours long and it's no big deal. So Lee did fight, but in the end he agreed to cut the movie down if Warner Brothers would release a director's approved cut in the future, which they agreed to. So Malcolm X opened on November 18th, 1992, and it was a huge critical success, making everyone's top 10 list. Roger Ebert gave it a glorious review. Two Oscar nominations with 18 other wins and other award ceremonies and was deemed an instant classic in cinema. And to this date, it is arguably Spike Lee's best film. However, I do honestly think that if it wasn't released at that time and they pushed it um, maybe mid of 93, uh, it would have been a bigger success to the public. Because again, so many emotions were running high from the Rodney King beating. But you gotta hand it Spike Lee, he accomplished more than what he set out to do and gained respect from his peers and the moviegoers with this fantastic film. All right guys, so now I'm gonna dig into my movie review. Now Malcolm X isn't just one of the greatest on-screen biographies told, but it's also just an extraordinary film overall. As I mentioned earlier, the awestruck, brilliant performance from Denzel Washington, through the beautiful cinematography by Ernest Dickerson, through the skillful writing and the masterful direction of Spike Lee. Me and Simon still remember the first time we saw it, and we absolutely fell in love with it. I, we stack it up there with other cinematic greats. It's one of those rare gems where we just have to watch it every year and still no matter how many times we watch it, it com still completely holds up and we see and learn new things with each viewing. Not only is it dramatic, but it's also very entertaining to watch. The director's cut was recently released on Blu-ray a couple years ago and the director's cut includes over an hour of extra footage running at just under three hours and 22 minutes. The director's cut is just loaded with, with new subplots, new characters that really move the movie into a completely new direction than the theatrical version. We really get a true down-to-earth sense of who Malcolm X was as a person, privately and publicly. We learn throughout the film that Malcolm X was and has been a victim of violence. The movie depicts Malcolm X's early life and his childhood with the Ku Klux Klan burning down his family house to his father being murdered by the Klan in front of him. His mother was unable to support her children and Malcolm was placed into foster care. And throughout this time, we learn that Malcolm X is very smart. The film is showcases him being the brightest student in the class and he wanted a bright future, but he was unjustly held back by teachers. They were engraving into him that he would not have matter to anything and that all he was worth is labor work. And we see that from his childhood until he's a teenager, until he's a young adult, that this really affected him. So much so that he just kind of gave up and figured, I, I guess I am who they say I am. And he turned to a life of crime. Now it isn't until after Malcolm meets a black Muslim in prison who taught, him, who taught Malcolm X self-respect that the film really ignites. It sparks the fuel to what Malcolm X later becomes and does with his life as Malcolm X. Again, going back to Spike Lee's direction, he does a masterful job at taking us with Malcolm. We are there right next to him. Whatever he fears, we fear. Whatever he goes through, we go through. And the director's cut completely fleshes all this out and so much more. Now there's a big misconception about this film. Many people think it's a message movie or an angry movie, but it's not at all. Malcolm X isn't an assault on one race or another. Instead, Spike Lee addresses the movie to all races and not just black or white, but every race. And it really did touch me in ways that I really didn't think it would. And during the movie, we see what really motivates Malcolm X. And this movie is crucially important to see because it addresses the central subject of the film, which is of course race. But Spike Lee doesn't use the typical Hollywood cliches 
he throws that completely out the window. He doesn't say this or that is wrong or right. Instead, he puts the movie into your hands as the viewer and invites you to live in this person's shoes for a few hours. Sp Spike Lee spent a great amount of detail, even down to the smallest set piece in the background and into the film editing, and it's just a perfect and very powerful film. And with all these images combined with the fantastic sound design and the music, it is a very strong and powerful film. And even to this day, Malcolm X is shown in film schools. You can really tell that everybody involved in making this movie knew that this was something special, and it really is. But Malcolm X is one of those rare cinematic gems that will stay with you for years to come, and I guarantee you, you'll be watching this for a second time, very quickly after your first viewing. This will be a movie that you'll have in your library, ready to go every year to watch. And because of all this, it's no surprise that we gave Malcolm X a five out of a five. A definite must see. And now I want to hand it over to you guys. What do you, I want to know what you guys thought of Malcolm X the movie. If you haven't seen it already, what are you doing? Get up, go see this movie. Leave your comments down below and please be respectful in your comments. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down below so you can be notified of new videos that will be coming up. Hit that like button, leave your comments down below. And as always guys, we'll see you in the future.